son Goku from a different dimension to your own. My job is to hunt down dimension-crossing criminals such as this one. What's cracking? What's going on, gang? What's the deal? It's everybody's favorite unk, and today we got some monkey shit. Hello, monkeys. I have such high expectations for you. That's right. We got some monkey shit. We got the Kong Studios Super Saiyan 5 Goku or the Kong Studios 15. I don't really know which one it's supposed to be called. The names are kind of confusing, but we got Super Saiyan 5 Goku. Now, ever since I saw the original designs for this one, I want to say about six months ago before the first pre-order went up, I was kind of interested in this one. It was really, really cool to me that somebody was actually diving into that old school fan art that we all remember when we were younger uh, of the fantasy character of Super Saiyan 5 Goku. Now, I don't know too much about the fan art and all that crazy stuff. I know there's a lot of rumor and innuendo going on around Tablos, the creator of it. Um, there's actually some YouTube creators who do a great job covering a lot of Kong and the monocle fit third party stuff um check out you know um bombastic plastic af and burst cg both of those guys they have really good videos that are kind of deep dives on what's going on with the artists that made the original artwork for super saiyan 5 so if you're interested in that go check their videos out they always have great news on kong stuff dragon ball stuff in general but anyway um yeah, man, I was just always kind of intrigued uh, that, you know, somebody pulled the trigger to go ahead and, and make this design. Um, so, you know, I always like to ask a customary question uh, before we get into the review to kind of make it more interactive with the viewer. And the question for today is, what do you think about fan art, fan manga, stuff like that? This attire that Goku is wearing is actually from Super Dragon Ball Heroes, uh, which if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on YouTube, I believe, the whole series. Um, you don't really need to watch Super before you watch it. It's kind of just like one of those fantasy things, but watching Super before you watch it definitely helps because it, it'll familiarize you with some of those characters you may not know. Um, that's actually what made me finish Super was I started to watch this and I was like, let me go back and finish Super. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think about like, you know, fan mangas, fan animes, fanfic, all that stuff? Me personally, you know, it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really like too pressed on it. I'm more of a guy who, you know, I'm kind of a, a purist asshole for lack of a better term. I'm, I'm all about the canon, but you know, it's fun to go down that rabbit hole and, and Super Dragon Ball Heroes is pretty cool. So definitely check it out if you get a chance. Now, normally I get into the MSRP on this dude before we get started. And honestly, I'm kind of going to skip the MSRP on this one. If you saw my last video about the metal cooler drop from P Bandai, I was kind of talking about the secondhand market and all that stuff. And I kind of went over the MSRP on this guy a little bit. He was $65 plus shipping on 5K toys. That's where I got him. Uh, so it ended up being about $75 all in all. Um, I'll just say real quick, if you see this guy on Mercari or eBay and somebody's selling him for $170 or more, don't do it. It's, it's not worth it. Like that, save your money. Like it's, it's, it's not worth it, bro. Like find it in a Facebook group, find a friend that can trade for it. If anything, trade for it because don't, don't pay more than, I, I would say don't pay more than a hundred dollars for this figure. And that's too much anyway. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at the box art and get into it. All right, so on the front of the box, you got that artwork of Super Saiyan 5 Goku. Pretty simple, nothing crazy. I really like it. I like the presentation of this uh, box by Kong here. It's pretty cool. It has a premium feel to it. You go to the side, you've got just Kong on the side with Kong 15, which I believe is supposed to be the name of this figure. I guess that means it's the 15th figure in the series. Somebody let me know in the comments because I'm not too educated on Kong. And then on the back of the box, you see it says not a toy for children, for adult collectors only, warning choking hazard, all that good stuff. But enough about the box. Let's go ahead and get this guy out and take a closer look. You feel me? All right, guys, now this is my first Kong figure and fresh out the box, man, this dude looks awesome. But I will tell you, all the horror stories are true. Everything I had heard about the hair being extremely heavy is true. Right out the box, you can tell. And the hair is really, really sharp as well. But I will say the aesthetic on this dude looks awesome. The tan biography on the faces is really good. I love the red eyes on it. One thing I noticed off bat though, was that one of the sideburns doesn't connect on the faceplate, which moving forward in the review, we'll see if you know, the other faceplates connect, but this, the one that comes stock on it definitely doesn't connect. Um, so that was kind of a weird little mishap. Um, but you know, kind of the type of thing I expect with a, you know, a third party company. 
The skirt piece is really, really cool. The sculpt is awesome. I believe this is a completely different sculpt from the Super Saiyan 4 uh, Goku upper torso. So that's awesome. I like that they use their own sculpt. I really like how they have like, you know, there's like the, the battle damage on the pants, like the rips. And there's one part where you can see the fur on his leg through the rips. And it even has like the little like, um, the little like texture of the fur on it. And that looks really cool. That's awesome. I love that attention to detail, but it's kind of puzzling to me that it's only in one spot on his pants. Like I wish that they would have, you know, went the extra mile and kind of put that in the other holes on his pants. Um, but I do appreciate the fact that they did pay attention to that little detail. You know, everything is sculpted pretty well. It looks really good. I was already expecting him to look really good. That's the main reason I bought him was because he looked good. I will say, man, the main event of this product to me, you know what I'm saying? The thing that we all came for was the hair. The hair looks amazing. Even though it's heavy, the shading is awesome. I love it, man. The fur has that shading on it as well. Like this thing is painted up so awesome. Like every little detail about the aesthetic on this thing is on point. He's even got his little bag of sensu beans or whatever that is in his, in his waist belt. Um, this thing looks really, really cool, man. And I really like this design, like the bottom part at least for the, um, the Xeno Goku from Super Dragon Ball Heroes. I think that's really cool. And that's actually what drew me to continuing to watch the fan, the fan anime um, because I thought the, the character designs were cool and having other Super Saiyan 4s, you know, come fight Goku and Vegeta. But anyway, go watch it. Um, but yeah, aesthetically, this guy looks great. All right, now getting into accessories, man, you get a pretty good spread. It's honestly pretty much the same spread that you get with Super Saiyan 4 Goku, but you do get a massive amount of hands too. The accessories come in these little baggies, um, which is cool. So, you know what I'm saying? They're all together. Uh, you take them out the baggies and then you get um, you get a blast effect. The blast effect is kind of a weird color choice. Like, I, I don't know why it's that kind of like, you know, orangish yellow. Um, I've seen other people talk about this figure and they said it looked more mustardy. I think it looks more orangish yellow, at least on mine, that's how it looks. The blast effect is whatever. The one thing I'm kind of disappointed in is my blast effect. One of the little beams that comes out of it is molded the wrong way to go into the little ball that goes in his hand. So I can't even plug the beam in. So it is what it is. Honestly, like these blast effects are cool, but I, you know, I use like my Super Saiyan 4 Goku, I keep him posed up with his, but I don't really like these blast effects because they're kind of annoying. So I don't really plan on posing him with this one anyway, but it's cool to have. You get four faces with him, including the neutral face that comes on him. You get a smirking face. You get a yelling face. And you get a gritted teeth face. And like I said, all the faces look really cool. The tambography's done great. The lines and stuff, the line work on the cheeks and all that look really cool. And I love the choice of the red eyes. It looks really, really cool. And then you get six sets of hands. So you get a whole lot of hands. You get the blast holding hand with a little peg to peg into the blast. You get open hands. You get instant transmission hands. You get the martial arts hands. And you get the blast holding or the grabbing hands without the little piece to put into the ball to hold the blast effect. And yeah, man, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good spread of accessories. The face plates change just like any other Goku figure. You just pop the front of the hair off, you know what I'm saying? And then you um, you know, pop the face plate out and switch it. I do like the way that the um the little hair pieces on the on the um front of the hair are made. They're really cool. They're like soft, so they're not brittle. So if the figure falls over, which it's inevitably gonna do because it's heavy as shit, um they won't break or nothing like that. So I like that they made them like real, you know what I'm saying, pliable, that soft plastic. Kind of the same material that the skirt piece is made out of. Now, one thing I do wish, I wish that the accessories came with a stand. For some reason, I was under the impression that this figure came with a stand because most people I've seen displaying it um, have it with a stand. And yeah, that, that's that's a missed opportunity to me. Like why in, in the world would you have a figure where the hair is this damn heavy that you don't include a stand? Um, I think they really missed the mark on that one, especially for the price point. Like, this thing is $65, bro. Throw in a stand, bro. Like, you can give us a stand. That's just lazy. So, definitely got to knock some points for that. They should have added a stand with this thing. But other than that, you know what I'm saying, you get a, a good spread of accessories. So, shout out to them. One thing I do think is cool is you get two instant transmission hands. So, if you want to, you know, throw up some Jutsus with them, you know what I'm saying? You want them to shoot a fire style majestic flame or something like that, like some Madara Uchiha shit, like you can do that too, so that's cool. All right, now let's get into articulation. And if this is your first time watching a review on the channel, I do not go over every single point of articulation because I'm not a scientist. I do not design action figures, but I will put him in some poses and see what he can do, God damn it. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the articulation on this thing is okay. I mean, obviously, you know, the head's not gonna really be able to do anything because of how heavy the hair is. Um, that's obvious, like going in, that's something that I think everybody would know purchasing this head. But with the head being like almost pretty much useless, 
the ab crunch and the waist swivel are pretty much like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're canceled out by a proxy of the hair being so heavy. Cause like, if you just put them in certain positions with this ab crunch and stuff like that, it's gonna kind of just fall back because of the hair. Um, so, you know, you can't really avoid that. I don't know about you guys though. I didn't really buy this figure to pose him up in the most, you know what I'm saying, dramatic way. I bought him to look good on the shelf. So, you know, um, I'm not really too disappointed in that. I will say some of the joints are like a little brittle and some of them are like a little like, you know, wonky and gummy for lack of a better term. So underneath the right arm on mine, if you look at this video right here, when I move it back and forth, you can see it starting to crack like away from the scene. So you gotta be really careful when posing this guy around. And that's one thing I do enjoy about doing these reviews is that it, it makes me like mess around with the figure so I know what's wrong with it. So I don't just put it on the shelf and leave it there and then one day try to pose it and break it. Cause otherwise I would have just set it on the shelf if I wasn't doing this review. So it's good to know that. So, it, you know, it's a little weird right there. The knees to me, the knees feel a little gummy for lack of a better term. They almost kind of give me that springy effect. I feel like when I try to bend them too far back. So the double jointed knees don't really work the best. Um, the thigh swivel is fine. You get your, you know, typical double jointed elbow. The double jointed elbow is like, doesn't really have a lot of range on it. Like it's double jointed, but it's more like a single jointed elbow. Maybe it's just mine. Um, and also with this figure, I didn't really want to push any of the joints too, too, too hard. Just because, you know, like I said, the, fi the figure just felt like brittle in certain places. And also just like, you know, like it wasn't supposed to move that way in certain places. The ankle hinges on mine were very, very tight to the point where every time that I was cranking it back and forth, it would squeak super, super loud, like almost like a cracking squeak, which is really scary. Like I was scared to move his ankles, you know what I'm saying, on the hinge, which is not good for a figure that has a heavy head like this because that's gonna be the main thing that's gonna help you balance him without a stand. And if you're looking in some of these, uh, you know, these poses and even some of the shots that I've shown throughout the video, I tried my best to kind of have him without a stand when he was standing up to show you guys that it is possible. Uh, but you do have to fight with it and those ankles being like really, really tight, like extremely tight, don't make it easy. So, you know what I'm saying? I was disappointed in that. Butterfly joints work fine. You know what I'm saying? They work like a typical butterfly joint. You know, everything else is pretty smooth besides the ankles, the knees, and that one part in the arm. You know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, the ab crunch and the, and the waist swivel is like, you know, because the head is so heavy, it it, it, it kind of just cancels it out, but it is there. Um, but like I said, I don't think that most people bought this figure to pose it around like crazy. But if you did, you know what I'm saying? Here goes some poses, you know what I'm saying? You see the poses up here? So you can pretty much get him into everything you need. Um, just be careful, be really, really careful because he is, he is fragile and he's a little brittle. All right guys, forgive me if the audio sounds a little shitty on this part of the video. Um, I normally do the size comparisons on the rotating stand, but as you probably know by now, and I've probably said it a million times in the review by now, um, his hair and, you know, the balancing act of, of getting him to stand up is just annoying enough on his own. So I didn't want to battle with that on the rotating stand. So I'm going to do the size comparisons like this right here. I'm straight up live raw footage. Uh, you've got him against Super Saiyan 4 Goku from Figure Arts, and you also have him up against Gogeta Blue. And uh, that hair makes him look a smidge taller, but I think he's about the same size, honestly. Um, so he looks good up, up against both those guys, the two guys he was beating up on throughout most of this video. I'm gonna just kind of throw in some stuff I got laying around over here, because, you know, like I said, I'm doing this one live off the cuff. So we got Super Boo here as well, and wow, he's way out the frame. I'm gonna have to Super Boo. We'll do some other big characters at Napa right there as well. And let's get a Dragon Star in here. Let's do Kid Boo since we got Super Boo right there. So that's how we scale to so those guys. Looks pretty good. A Demoniacal Fit. We got the Bitter Awakening Vegeta right there as well. Seven inch scale for your fantasy battles. McFarlane Superman as well. All right. All right. We got Duke from the Duke and Ram cycle pack for G.I. Joe Classified. Make sure my zoom is good. We got, we'll do a Marvel Legend. We got Jigsaw. Walgreens exclusive Jigsaw right there. Let's get with some Hasbro stuff. You put in here. You got Figure Arts Triple H if he wants to stand up. Figure Arts Triple H. 
we'll do classified sergeant slaughter. And you know what? You can't have a size comparison without this guy. Sorry if the, again, sorry if the audio is bad, guys. I'm not taking way too long for this. This is gonna make this video way longer than I want it to be. <laughs> Can't do a size comparison without your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. So we'll just do, since this is the one I get my hands on the closest, take Triple H out of here because he's not really in scale. Got your Japanese Spider-Man. So yeah, those are some size comparisons with the Kong SSJ5 Goku for you right there. All right, final thoughts on my boy Super Saiyan 5 Goku. He looks damn good. Like this thing looks so damn good. So if you were like me and you're buying this just to kind of have a very unique piece in your collection to display and you're a big Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball fan, then this is a must have. If you're primarily a Dragon Ball collector, this is a must have. I recommend you get it, um, especially if you can get it for a good price because the way that things are looking with the pricing on this guy, it's only gonna get worse, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even though by my estimation, it's nowhere near worth even half the price that people are charging for it. But yeah, it just looks really, really good, man. It's a conversation piece, you know what I'm saying? If you have homies that are into Dragon Ball and they see this, they're gonna be like, oh, you got Super Saiyan 5, let me see it. And you're gonna be like, yo, don't touch it because it's gonna fall over, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so it's definitely gonna be an attention grabber. And for that alone, it gets, you know, a, a pretty good mark from me. Um, but I will say, man, with this being Kong Studios and with them being a third party company, which, you know, automatically makes them a smaller company, there's parts of this figure that feel too much like a bootleg. It feels too cheap for the price. The articulation, I'm gonna be real with you, it's horrible. Like, it's not good, it's really bad. It's like nowhere near the level of a Tamashii Nations, which you wouldn't expect it to be because it's not Tamashii Nations, and you should know that going into this. But for the price, like, it's ridiculous that they're charging the amount they were for the quality that you get as far as the articulation goes. Um, I'd even go out on a limb and say, you know, this is my first Kong figure, you know, and I'm definitely gonna try more, but I'd go out on a limb and say that, you know, the demoniacal fit figures that I own, you know, have way better articulation and space than this one, like way better. I wish it came with the stand, you know what I'm saying, as well for the price. So, ah, man, as much as I do love this figure because it looks so damn cool and it's just gonna, it, it's gonna take your display to another level, man, I'm telling you. Um, I'm gonna give him a number grade and I'm gonna go ahead and give this guy a seven out of 10. And that's a very generous seven because the aesthetic on this thing is really carrying. Like if it, if it didn't look this good, if the paint job wasn't done so well, besides that one you know, mishap with the sideburn, um, and yes, the other face plates do have a crack where the sideburn is at too as well, um, then I wouldn't give him a seven. He probably like, if he didn't look this good, he'd probably be a five. But yo, he looks so damn good that it carries this guy through the finish line. So I'm gonna give Kong Studios for their effort with the Super Saiyan 5 Goku a seven out of 10. Um, but what do you guys think of this figure? If you have it, if you don't have it, are you planning on picking it up? I drop reviews all the time. Um, lately, I've been trying to drop more podcasts on the channel and as well as more just content in general, man. You know what I mean? Leave it in the comments below what you thought about this video. Leave it in the comments below what you want to see on the channel. Let me know where I fucked up at if you disagree, if you do agree, you know what I'm saying? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, do all that good stuff. And until next time, peace.